Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial of ISTQB Advanced Technical Test Analyst. We are in chapter 4 and continuing with the next topic that is security testing. Of course this uh, word sounds a little very interesting to a lot of us that what exactly security is all about and uh, how exactly security parameters can be measured what are the key characteristics which we should be talking about so thus this tutorial can help many others of our viewers to understand more about what is security testing and how the uh, different activities can be performed so let's quickly get started on this the very first thing what we are talking about is reasons for considering security testing that why should i consider talking about testing the security Security of an application. So the most important thing is of course there are a lot of parameters which may have a vulnerability to the application in order to have threats by attempting to compromise the system security. It might be possible that when you talk about some of the complicated systems or you know some domain specific to like you know banking or you talk about some people who have a privacy policy in order to uh, restrict their content access to anybody else there might be a lot of such things which will be involved in order to bypass those restrictions to access the data and what if i want to have such things for my end users as well specific the best example is to understand from banking itself that when it comes to banking i want my data to be secured the people uh, who do or deal with their hard-earned money and they save that money in a bank then bank responsibility is to make sure that they provide them highly secure environment so that nobody can penetrate into this and take away their hard-earned money so yes that's one of the best example in summary to understand why should we consider security testing but yes we do have a lot of technical examples to understand the same in more detail that what could be the issues or what kind of possibilities may happen related to security and we want to avoid that to happen to start with on the top is unauthorized copying of the application or data sometimes people may copy your code and create a duplicate of that and then compete with you unauthorized access of controls sometimes the controls may allow you to have privileges to do certain activities like being a bank manager authority or probably having an administrator rights in order to make changes to the application or delete somebody's account add some accounts and do certain transactions which only a super you know super right person is available with software which exhibits unintended side effect when performing its intended functions like you try to do something but something else additionally happens with that that's just due to you know a lot of reasons which uh, security uh, parameters are responsible for so some you know some kind of injection of the malicious code can be added to the code and then you do some activity parallelly additional activities also happen say for example you want to make a payment and the payment details are parallelly shared to the uh, person who wants to hack your account Code inserted into a web page which may be exercised by subsequent users. I think that's very common if your website is uh, your web page or your blog spot is quite you know frequently going into the market and they have un hundred and thousand visitors every day. Then of course people will try to hack into your account and put something uh, malicious so that you know uh, the whenever somebody interacts that different messages goes into that or probably the uh, person's email id and private confidential information is also shared publicly to different platforms or to the hacker as well uh, denial of the service which prevents user from interacting with an application so sometime uh, there is a possibility that the restrictions will not allow a user to do that job at all so it's not only always about negative sometimes it is about positive so what if i am a supported user for that particular environment and due to the security firewalls and restrictions i may not be able to perform the task so i need to test it in order to make sure that the eligible people have access to it and non-eligible people do not have access to it the interception mimicking and or altering the subsequent relying of the communications which is like you know only about the the third party communication or any kind of some additional code which could be inserted and whenever you're trying to work on it somebody is actually watching you it's just like you taking a bath in a you know glass bathroom which is transparent and everyone is actually watching you whenever you go to take a bath so that's that's what is really important when you talk about such security parameters so you don't want to be transparent 
when you want to have something of your private. Uh, breaking the encryption codes used to protect sensitive data. Like generally you know that your passwords are always encrypted no matter what kind of account you deal with. But yes, your password is encrypted. But is there a possibility that someone can decrypt it and decrypt and get the exact password what is required? So you won't find any you know such ethical tool to do that job. Even if you talk about automation tools which captures the instruction what you perform on the screen will not let you do that. It will only copy a encrypted value. Uh, additionally, like, you know, logic bombs, which we know also as Easter eggs, which may be maliciously uh, inserted into the code and which activates only under certain conditions. Like if at the moment you click on a particular date, when you reach that particular date, it's just like a time bomb. So that particular virus gets activated or that code gets activated and the information start being shared that this is what the person is trying to do. This is what the instructions the user has given and many such other things. So yeah, these are a lot of such considerations which uh, makes you interested to know that why security testing should be conducted uh, before releasing the product into the market and making sure that your users are highly secured with their private and confidential information. The next part of it, uh, we will be understanding how security testing can be planned, what kind of planning steps would be required, and how we should do that. So in general, the following aspects are the particular relevance when planning for security test. So what should we consider? Let's see. Because security issues can be introduced during the architecture, design, and implementation of the system, security testing may be scheduled for unit integration and system. Team, we are talking about non-function level. We are talking about uh, technical test analyst responsibility. But here we are saying that we can find a lot of thing right at the architecture, design, or implementation phases. Thus, you can schedule some of the levels of uh, security testing or some of the part of it right from the unit integration system. How is that possible? Now generally when you conduct unit testing and you run a program, you make sure that this program does not allow you to intercept or allow any in external person or third party software to interfere in this particular code. So no matter what functionality you are preparing, at the side by side you can also write the security features implementation of that in order to make sure that everything is very much secure. The test approaches proposed by the technical test analyst may include reviews of the architecture and all. So yes, of course, if you know that the phase where generally the defects are being introduced, you always strive to have phase containment, making sure that the defect is identified in the same phase where it is introduced. Because we don't want to have later defects and that is actually going to increase your cost of fixing the defect. The technical test analyst may be called upon to design and perform certain security attacks which require careful planning and coordination with stakeholders. Yes, so generally the technical test analyst can be involved much earlier in the life cycle in order to perform certain attacks which would prove that whether the code is secured or not. So your approach will be slightly different. But of course, it is kind of like destructive trying to prove that it is approachable, it is hackable, and people can penetrate into this. So you just perform those things at early levels to make sure that whether the program allows you to do that or not. An essential aspect of security test plan is obtaining approvals. Yes. Say, for example, you work for an organization which is going to create security applications or creating an application in such a way that uh, it does not allow an external person to move into the product or copy the code or inject a part of the code into this application. Then to perform such similar activities to make sure that uh, your program is highly secured, your application is well maintained in terms of like avoiding all this kind of penetration. Then to perform such testing, you should seek proper approvals because maybe you might be called as a culprit if you perform such kind of things. So you might be ethical hacker, you might be a technical test analyst responsible to do those things, but until unless you inform your test manager or you seek that approval that we are going to conduct security testing and we will have this approach to attack the particular program. 
and the manager or the organization must be aware of that that this is what you will be doing and if anything goes wrong we know that this is what your approach was to prove that so yes as you are doing something different like you know getting into a particular code by a third party software or third party approach then the team must be aware of that all security test planning should be con coordinated with the organization's information uh, security officer if the organization has a such role no matter your organization if they deal with security testing you will have your standard security provisions and a person to take care of that so your security officer at the organization must be kept informed from time to time about your planning stages or planned activities that this is what we'll be trying to do at later stages and attacking the same it should be noted that improvements which may be made to the security of the system may affect its performance efficiency reliability and so on so it it, it must be taken into consideration that when you try to do such things does that impact it so you know these kind of things may have a side effect as well that as we are trying to secure we are writing additional lines of code to secure a simple program now maybe it is possible that your security instructions are longer than the piece of code which is written for the feature so it might add more response time or degrade the performance of the application due to this additional code so keep that in consideration that when you try to secure a product or application at the same time you plan efficiently to improvise the performance for that the next thing is about the specifications that how security test specifications can be evaluated or probably documented or how do you derive your specification for security testing as we talk about security testing uh, it has a lot of standards in order to implement security parameters for different domains it might be like medicals the banking or high-end applications like what your uh, you know secret agencies might be using in order to penetrate into a lot of things so yes we consider those kind of things to determine thus we have a standard uh, available in order to assist you but yes that's not all we do have many other things which will assist you so starting with the very first thing is particular security test may be grouped according to the origin of security risk so first comes the security risk which includes user interface related like unauthorized access and malicious inputs file system related access to sensitive data stored in files or repository operating system related storage of sensitive information such as password in non-encrypted form so none of the browsers should allow you to do that when they save your passwords for memories like recalling that when you want to re-sign in then they should not have a policy that they decrypt it and store it external software related interaction which may occur among external components that the system utilizes remember that whenever you do something on the social media sometimes some external application will ask you to allow access same way when you are using your phone uh, you know a lot of applications will ask you allow access to contacts allow access to gallery so <clears throat> when you allow that that means they have access to all these information you just be careful next time further an ISO 25010 sub characteristics of security also provides a basis from which security tests may be specified these focus on the following aspect of the security like confidentiality uh, the integrity non produce uh, non producible uh, and then accountability and authenticity confidentiality says the degree to which a product of system uh, ensures that data is accessible only to those authorized to have access integrity the degree to which a system product or component prevents unauthorized access or modification of computer programs or data non reputation the degree to which the actions or events can be proven to have taken place so they cannot be denied later now that's again something which is really important accountability the degree to which the action of an entity can be traced uniquely to an entity that's like you know just traceability in simple terms and authenticity the degree to which the identify of a subject or resource can be proven to be the one claimed yeah are you the right user to access this or not so you authenticate yourself and the same thing has to be measured and monitored 
The last thing here to understand that there are certain approaches which may be used to develop security tests. Just like, you know, the black box techniques, white box techniques and strategies which you have, which you use generally in your testing. Similarly here, you can have certain approaches to do the same job. To start with, we have gather information which may be useful in specifying test. It could be like anything, name of the employees, physical addresses regarding the internal networks like IP numbers, identification of the software or hardware or operating system, version of the operating system, anything which aids into your security parameters. You gather all the necessary information before you can start thinking about your test cases. Perform a vulnerability uh, scan using widely available tools just to check that if the tools has any kind of compromises or any kind of breach of security policy and look into that. Develop attack plans which will be completely in order to make sure that uh, when somebody is trying to penetrate into your code uh, what kind of you know uh, reaction happens or what kind of action allows you to do that. Does that really happen or not and a lot of such things can be practiced. So several inputs via uh, various interfaces need to be specified in the attack plans to detect the most severe security defects. The various attacks can be even considered from different standards which we discussed above. So a lot of parameters are available and everything must be well documented in order to assist your security testing. Now this is what we had to cover as a part of the syllabus but of course we do have a lot of tools available to do certain testing and help you to define those standards inbuilt and prepare your test cases accordingly. So we have OZAP uh, and you have a lot of such tools which are available from Google as well. I, I'm not getting it right now exactly but yes probably in the description I'll put that so you can find something more about that. So yep. Yeah, that's all from this particular tutorial team. We learned really a lot about the uh, security testing in this tutorial and that was really interesting to explore more about that. Should you have anything else beyond this, feel free to comment below. I'll be there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring and keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.